okay, we opened the door for more autoimmune diseases which are systemic in their nature rather than just primarily localized. And rheumatoid arthritis is the second mother of all classic systemic autoimmune diseases. And you should never ever think of it as being localized even though primarily and most severely clinically it's expressed in joints. Rheumatoid arthritis is a systemic autoimmune disease in which many lesions are present, uh, not only in the joints, but in internal organs, you know, lung, skin, uh, many other places. Similarly, if you want to think of Sjogren's syndrome as primarily a localized form of uh, inflammation of the salivary glands, you can, but it's also a systemic autoimmune diseases uh, related to problems in many other places. Scleroderma, if you'd like to think of that as limited to the skin, you're just downright wrong. The fibrosis of chronic scleroderma extends to all connective tissues, and that's why it's no longer called scleroderma. That's why it's called systemic uh, sclerosis. Uh, in rheumatoid arthritis, we could see some ulnar deviation at the MP joints here, which is classical, and we'll get into the more specifics of the disease when we get into the chapter on bone and joints. If you look at the bottom here, this is a uh, normal synovium. It's just a couple of cells thick, the synovial cells, uh, macrophage-like cells, perhaps a little bit of connective tissue, very thin, very shiny uh, uh, synovial cells. Well, look at them over here in the northeast. Look at the massive infiltrates of uh, inflammatory cells involving these synovial membranes. This is a whopping, severe, often acute synovitis, which is the primary histopathologic process in rheumatoid arthritis. In Sjogren's syndrome, often we have uh, enlargement and inflammation of the uh, various salivary glands. In this case, from the location, you can see it's parotid but it's a systemic uh, disease as well. If you could recognize this um, piece of tissue as representing salivary gland, you know it's probably not parotid because you could see some uh, mucus acini like here and here and here, and there's a lot of them. This is totally mixed, so you know it's more likely submandibular gland. This is normal. You could see ducts in the lobules, outside the lobules, a lot of fat. This is classical uh, severe uh, say I'll adenitis with Sjogren's syndrome. You see total disruption and destruction of the asini and ducts and heavy infiltrates of uh, chiefly uh, lymphocytes. And you, here you can see some remnants of some of the larger ducts and persistence of a little bit of fat as well. Let's talk about scleroderma. If you would recognize this as being relatively normal skin, you can see a variety of uh, skin appendages here extending into the dermis. You could see s relatively good differentiation between papillary dermis and reticular dermis. Well, in scleroderma, this is all fibrotic. You have loss of skin appendages. You have more dense fibrosis and less of a differentiation between the more delicate papillary dermis and the denser uh, reticular dermis. Here you can see some fibrosis and chronic inflammation in some of the uh, uh, sweat glands underneath the skin. It may result as a skin picture looking very much like this. This is a severe case, uh, but don't forget this is a systemic disease so the same fibrosis that we see going on in the dermis could very easily and uh, will be going on uh, in internal organs as well, such as esophagus, gastrointestinal tract, uh, pleural peritoneal surfaces. This is a systemic sclerosis. If you would like to look primarily, once again, at the local autoimmune diseases, in every case, you have to recognize that there are local antigens uh, which are being attacked 
by the immune process. And in the case of thyroiditis, we're talking about antibodies against uh, microsomes of thyroid cells or uh, thyroglobulin. So if your patient has Hashimoto's, you're suspecting that it's a uh, patient comes in with hypothyroidism, you're suspecting the number one cause, you order antibodies against uh, uh, microsomal and thyroglobulin uh, uh, autoantibodies. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia, cells being destroyed by virtue of antibodies attacking antigens on uh, red cell surfaces. Multiple sclerosis, whereas still very much a mysterious disease, I think generally regarded as being autoimmune, autoimmune arthritis. Actually, any disease which starts out with the name autoimmune will then give you the name of the tissue or organ or cell uh, which is being attacked. In good pasture syndrome, you have to remember it's the glomerular basement membrane as well as uh, lung antigens. And here, we, it's platelets. And here, it's uh, pernicious anemia. It's the uh, antibodies against intrinsic factor produced in the gastric mucosa. In uh, insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus or type 1 or juvenile, it's against the patient's own uh, beta cells in the islets, so you would get an autoimmune Eyelitis, eyelitis, if you will. In myasthenia gravis, it's antibodies against uh, the um, uh, interface between nerves and muscles, the neuromuscular junction. In Graves' disease, once again, it's uh, antibodies against some thyroid elements. But isn't it interesting that the same disease process, autoimmune, that causes a hypothyroidism can also cause a hyperthyroidism. And uh, we'll move on to the next category, the immunodeficiencies in the next group. And I thank you very much.